Welcome to yet another exciting episode of the Online Prosperity TV Show. And today we have none other than Tanya. Tanya, how are you doing today? I'm good, how are you? Very well, thanks. Now, guys, you're going to be in for a ride today because I'm speaking to the chief of everything. <laughs> that I am. <laughs> So Tanya is the chief of everything at uh, Digital Conversations, and she is what she has coined a tradigital specialist. I'm well done. You pronounced it right. Good on you. <laughs> I've been working on it, all right? So it's one of my favorite words at the moment, and you're probably going to be hearing a lot about it, all right? So Tanya came about with this because she's got 20 plus years of experience in traditional marketing and also sells digital and e-commerce innovative technologies. So she's married both um, aspects of this marketing uh, thing and called it to digital specialization. Did I get that right, uh, Tanya? You did. You did a pretty good job there, Prosper. <laughs> so tell us a little bit about this whole tradigital uh, side of things. Um, well, I've worked in the, in the traditional marketing space for many years and then started moving into digital and really loved the digital world. But what I found was there wasn't really anyone having conversations with businesses around how to bring the both of them together. So typically you had people trying to say, oh, you have to do traditional marketing and then you had other consultants saying, no, it's all about digital. But in the real world, we know that both of them are, are essential and particularly with uh, traditional businesses. So, you know, professional services and recruitment and those types of businesses who are, you know, very much in that traditional space, they often struggle to understand where digital fits into the whole sort of marketing equation. So um, I sort of coined the term tradigital um, and, and many people have have trouble pronouncing pronouncing it, but it's really about bringing traditional and digital together in a way that really integrates and that you have a synergy across both with all of your marketing messages. Great stuff. Okay, so let's say I'm a traditional type face um, business. What yep. are the few things that you would do to transform that traditional approach that we have into like a fully digital uh, uh, conversion for, for a business to actually benefit uh, with their marketing strategy? Well, I mean, it all depends on what they're trying to achieve. So firstly, what are their objectives? Secondly, we need to look at who their audience is and what channels their audience um, are on. Because at the end of the day, it's all about your target market and your audience, not where, not where you want to be or what, you, you know, what your message is. So we need to start with those sorts of, um, you know, understandings. And then from there, it's about looking at what they're doing in the, in the traditional space and then going, well, okay, this is where your audience is on a digital space, so how do we then bring those two together? So often it's simple things like, um, I often use an example of, for example, um, a magazine ad. And this happened to me a couple of years ago, which is what got me thinking about this whole traditional space, was I opened up a local magazine, it was advertising, I think it was Melbourne Cup dresses, it, obviously it was that time of the year, I'm like, I need to get a, a new dress for Melbourne Cup, very important, you know, it's all about priorities. And it was telling me to go to their website. So I went to their website and there was no mention of the sale. I couldn't find the dress. And I was like, wow, this is such a missed opportunity. You've, you've got a, you know, a, a traditional print ad here that you, and then you're telling you in that print ad to go to your website, which, is, which makes perfect sense. But then you've missed the opportunity totally because when I got to your website, there's no mention of what you were advertising to start with. So it's, it's simple things like that where they're not thinking um, cross-channel. They're thinking, oh, I'm putting messages here, there, and, and everywhere, but they're not actually thinking about what messages are where and how they all integrate and how they should talk to one another. Great stuff. So there's a, there was a disconnect, right? Oh, they, disconnect. Right, right. So now this is now all making sense because you figure out something from your experience and you... Yeah decided to put that into the market. Did you face any hostility or people thinking that this is going to be something difficult for you to put through? Well, I think um, many people get overwhelmed by the digital space in general. Right. So what often happens is there's so much choice, there's so many options, there's, you know, they're overwhelmed by where to start, so they just don't do anything. And that's the worst thing that you can do because they just go, oh, I just don't know who to talk to about this, or they've been... Um, burnt in the past, for example, as well. So that's what I often find when I have those conversations. So I wouldn't call it hostility. I would certainly say there's probably a little bit of pushback from people who are 
really overwhelmed by it and maybe don't want to admit that they're overwhelmed by it because um, no one wants to say that, oh, I'm a bit scared about all that. They just want to go, don't need that. So you're <laughs> offering that sort of response. So when, you, when people are doing that, you can usually go, okay, these guys are just really um, scared of it and they're not, they're not really wanting to admit it. So that's, you just sort of have to hold their hand through the process. Tell me that sounds also amazing. And right now, as you know, the reason why you're watching this show is so that you can also start scale and grow your own digital marketing agency. And Tanya is sitting there and telling you that she saw a void in the market and she went and pursued it. Okay. And tell us about the first days when you started doing this. How did you, you know, approach clients and how did you get people onto your side of, 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 of the table to have such conversations with them? Because some people are afraid of having their own idea and bringing it to fruition, but you have now become the digital expert and hence the reason for this interview today. So yeah. tell us about the first few days when you started, you saw the magazine and now that you, you, you saw the need, Tell us the processes that you took to, to get fully started uh, with your agency. I think um, you need to have a really clear vision on what it is you're trying to achieve and really have something that's going to differentiate yourself. So for me, uh, as we spoke about before, there's so many people in the digital marketing space and everyone's doing a lot of the same sort of thing. I mean, there's a social media expert on every corner. There's a strategist, you know, everyone's doing the same thing. So I think you need to really go, what's my point of difference? Where, who is my like core market and my niche market and be very specific about who you want to service. Uh, because when I, when I started the business and I, I learned the hard way, I um, was, you know, took that sort of shotgun approach and when started talking to people that I knew um, and then you were trying to be everything to everybody. And at the end of the day, trying to do that, you really um, probably going around in circles because you don't get anywhere fast. So it took me a little while to understand that, hang on a minute, I can't be everything to everybody. I need to really differentiate, my, differentiate myself in the market. What am I doing that's different? Where are my core strengths and what do I enjoy doing? So that was where I looked. So I went, these are the things that I enjoy doing and there's certainly things that I don't enjoy. So, you know, search marketing for me, not my area. I hate it. Like it's so if I have clients that I'm like, no, I'm not the person to talk to about that. So I'm very clear on what I can and can't do and certainly what I enjoy and what I don't enjoy because there's some things that I can do, but I just don't like doing them. So I can then partner with other people that have agencies that, part, that do those sorts of um, projects. So I think it's really important to know who you are, know what you're trying to achieve. And don't try and be everything to everyone because that's just, you'll end up just hating what you're doing and not getting anywhere fast. Those are some powerful words to actually niche down and know exactly what you're offering and not yeah. try to be everything to everyone. So obviously yeah. what really needs to be done is you figure out who you want to serve, go out there, look for them and make sure you're delivering a service to them. Yeah. Yes. So yes. You've gotten some inspiration when you started there, Tanya. Is there somebody that you can pinpoint you know, to the listeners there to say, I listen to, or I listen to myself and this is yeah. why. I, th I think I've probably been influenced by a lot of people. I can't say that there's just one person in particular. So right. I've always um, read a lot and I really enjoy reading about successful entrepreneurs. So one of the books that I read many, many years ago was one of Janine Ellis's books. Um, and I've recently had the pleasure of inter interviewing Janine and she's really lovely. And obviously she's come a long way since I read her first book many years ago, but Really successful entrepreneurs are people who generally inspire me. So I love listening to their stories about how they got started. You know, I know, um, you know, Philip Debella, for example, started his business with five thousand dollars, and I think sold it for ninety something million. Like that, those sorts of store, uh, stories really inspire me, um, and I love hearing about pe how people have used different tools and tactics to actually achieve that. So I can't say that there's just one person. There's probably been a whole series of people, but in particular. You know, I love Richard Branson. I love, you know, Bethany Frankel and people who are obviously um, <clears throat> well outside my realm of, of the everyday, but they're very um, successful in what they've chosen to do. And I think they just have a unique way of looking at things, which is really inspiring. Very well. You, you did mention that people have tactics and ways that they're doing their, their business and also people like Richard Branson who are, you know, world-renowned with that success. And I yeah. think 
you know, if you follow those trails, you also will be successful. Now, you mentioned tactics. Do you have any few resources that you probably can recommend to somebody who wants to start their own digital marketing agency or wants to start their career of being a digital uh, marketer? Yeah. Well, there's, I think there's some great, uh, there's some, some really great resources and, and tools out there. Digital tools are one of the things that I love, and I can talk all day about digital tools because there are so many of them out there. But um, I think from a purely a digital marketing perspective, I, I think it's really important to always be learning um, and upgrade, updating your skills and, and so forth. And I know I teach a lot of workshops, but I also attend a lot of workshops as well. So I do a lot of online courses and online learning and I read a lot of blogs and, and so forth. A couple that probably stand out for me, Social Media Examiner is one that's very well known worldwide. So if you're in that social um, social media space, those guys have so much information and it's a really great resource to go to um, to learn. I know uh, there's also online resources like Digital Marketer who do a, a whole heap of online courses at, at different levels. But then there's also sort of fairly general ones like um, Linda and Udemy and those types of platforms that you can learn not just about digital but, but just general business and, and all sorts of things. So I think there's plenty of tools and resources out there. Um, and then obviously then you've got tools and, and so forth to, to learn things like creating content and scheduling content and that sort of stuff. And that's a whole other world and a whole other interview. But, um, but I think, yeah, they, if, I mean, you get on the Google, there's, there's so many um, great resources. And I say subscribe to them, you know, read them, always be learning something new. So, I mean, there's, there's plenty of tools available for, for people. Um, so as, as I mentioned, um, you know, Linda, you and me, digital marketer, social media examiner, just in terms of resources. There are lots of blogs. You know, I have a YouTube channel that has over 120 videos on it. Um, there is plenty of content out there um, if people want to look for it and subscribe to it that will help you in terms of learning new skills or updating your existing skills. Okay. I was snooping your website a little bit earlier. Um, so are you digitally stalking me? <laughs> Don't worry, your pixel got me, all right? <laughs> <laughs> so, and I noticed you've got, um, I think, 21 tools that you can recommend to people. Is it something that we can uh, share with our audience? So they sure, can most definitely. So, um, one of the eBooks that I have is called 21 uh, Free Digital Tools. Right. And they are literally, it's a, it's a free download that you can grab from the website. They are just different tools that you can use in your business to help make you more efficient, save you time, money, and resources. So uh, I've got yeah all sorts of um, free resources and even very low cost eBooks and so forth that um, I share out with my audiences because uh, I'm very passionate about making um, or creating more individuals and businesses that are digitally savvy. So I think it's really important to to be able to share some of that content out with people just to help educate them great stuff because um <clears throat> in the show notes below guys you will be able to see the link to the 21 um uh tools courtesy of tanya here because what she has mentioned is she likes helping other entrepreneurs to be digital savvy so they have a business that's profitable and and and, and um, enjoyable which is what i think makes the world a perfect place to be because entrepreneurs produce and if they don't have a way to bring out their um, work and everything else that they're doing without the help of people like Tanya and yourself when you start your digital marketing agency then you know we wouldn't all um, have food or be clothed or even water to drink so we really appreciate people like yourself Tanya and uh, I would really Commend that uh, with the link that I'm going to show below, have a quick look at how Tanya has created her digital marketing agency. Have a quick look at how she is dealing with her clients and how she is putting herself out there. It is things that you could always learn from. Now, Tanya, do you have anything else that you can recommend somebody who's about to start or yes. somebody who is just, you know, on the fence on getting into the digital marketing agency? Tell them how fun it is. Oh, look, it's, it's great fun. Like, I love what I do. And, and I, um, when I go to networking events and I'm talking to people or I'm, I'm presenting and doing workshops and so forth, I think that passion for what I do, I, I keep getting told, always shines through. I think the first, the first thing you need to do is ask yourself, do I love this? Like, do I love doing this? Um, because that's the first um, point. Because if you don't love it, you spend way too much time in your business trying to, you know, 
do wear the multiple hats like we do, you have to love what you do. So for me, I often say I don't really distinguish between uh, weekdays and weekends or work and play because I enjoy what I do. So when I'm working or if I'm out talking to people or whatever else, it's fun. <laughs> so um, I think, yeah, I think that's the first thing you have to love it. I think you have to be really passionate about it and really doing it for the right reasons. Um, you know, money is, is a great thing to have because we all need to pay the bills. But I think um, having a bit of a vision or a mission around why you're wanting to do it. So for me, it's around, as I mentioned before, trying to create more in, um, digitally savvy individuals and businesses across the globe. You know, if I can touch someone's day by giving them or sharing some insights or some tips or some tools that will make their life easier as a business or, or a person, then I, that makes me feel good and I feel like I've done my job. So, um, you know, that's what I'm here to, to do. And, and I'm not a big believer in the word expert or guru. I hate it when, when people use that word because I think no one is. You always need to be constantly learning. Yes, I might more know more than some people in certain areas and other people might not know more than me. So I think um, it's about being a specialist in a particular area and you have to always be learning. Um, one of the things that I, that I come across sometimes with people who have been in an industry for a long time, and I, I had a conversation with someone the other day who said, oh, they've been in this particular industry for eight years, so I know everything. I don't need to do that. And I went, wow, really? Like, to me, that is just a ridiculous way of thinking that, oh, because I've been in an industry so long, I don't need to learn anything new. Um, and I think he'll fall on his face sooner rather than, than later if he thinks that he doesn't need to integrate digital into his business in any way or need, even need to consider doing anything anything new. So I think you have to be really um, proactive and have a really great attitude towards, a, a good mindset towards this stuff as well. Great stuff. That That is profound. And now I see why you've got so much success in your business because it's not about you anymore. You're giving out and you're doing exactly what it is that you love. Now, guys, help me thank Tanya or having spent her afternoon uh, with us. I hear it's very hot in Brisbane there. It's very hot. <laughs> <laughs> so she braced through the whole interview just so that she would deliver all these nuggets. If you check in the uh, comments below or in the show notes at the bottom, we'll put all the tools that she has recommended. And also don't forget to subscribe to her 21 tools that uh, will actually put you in a different life with your digital marketing agency. Now, on behalf of the whole crew, Tanya, thank you so much for your time today. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Great stuff. You guys have a great day and hopefully we see you at the top. Thank you so much once again.